Hey, thanks for tuning in to Twang and Bang. Just over a year ago at SHOT Show 2015, I spent a considerable amount of time talking to the designers at Carbon Express. That's right, an archery company was at SHOT Show. You're seeing more and more of that lately. Carbon Express was down in the basement and they were introducing their brand new line of crossbows there. Of course, they had their arrow shafts there, but they also had their newest broadhead. It's called the Shuriken. It's a fixed blade broadhead with a whopping one and a half inch cut. It's got six cutting edges, two sets of blades that are in parallel, and this was coming up next on Twang and Bang. The Shuriken is a 100 grain fixed blade broadhead designed to fly from both vertical bows and crossbows. Its cut on contact chisel point is 5 eighths of an inch across, perpendicular to the dual side by side cutting blades that give it an impressive 1.5 inch cutting diameter. Every one of the six cutting edges is razor sharp right out of the package, though they are easily removed for stropping or touching up after taking game. The parallel cutting blades are placed to reduce drag compared to a conventional four blade design, with one blade hiding behind the drag or the other as an arrow rotates in flight. The blades also create an H shaped wound that cuts flaps into animal hide reducing the chance that entrance or exit wounds close up and cut off your blood trail. For testing, I'm using my Hickory Creek Mini Inline Vertical Crossbow, which will shoot the shuriken at about 325 feet per second. Wow, that was way off. That's way off. I'm bringing it way closer because that was just ridiculous. That was way off. So I'm, I'm about 12 yards away using the, the top crosshair. Okay, 12 yards. First hit, second hit, third hit. <laughs> Yeah, that's about an inch group of 12 yards out of this bow. And it's got limited tunability for this bow or crossbows with rails. So this might do better out of other bows. That's one of the problems with testing broadheads. If you get good results, it means if you have good results with your setup. If you get bad results, it means two things it could mean that you're getting bad results just because of your setup but it could also mean you're not getting good results uh, because the broadhead is a bad design and you, you don't know between the two but clearly I'm not getting the kind of results that I would want to see with a broadhead that I would shoot from this bow <laughs> well it's not flying the way I want to out of that bow anyway it might fly better out of a bow that's, that's slower that's shooting about 325 feet per second uh, and I can't tune the arrow rest as easily as with uh, other regular vertical bows, but I still want to see the kind of wound that this creates should you be able to put it where you want to. So I've got my deer model here. It's a plastic bottle with tomato juice and on the front of it I've got strapped some pork ribs and uh, some deer hide, tan deer hide. Now I have the pork ribs still in the plastic. Why? Because it's not going to do anything about the test, but <laughs> I want to eat these when I'm done. I'm going to cut away the wound that, that's created by this broadhead, and I don't want this falling all over the dirt and getting dirt and pine needles everywhere. So I, I, I'm keeping it in the plastic so I'm not wasting perfectly good pork ribs by doing this test. But uh, I'm going to use some Kentucky windage. I'm not going to dial the scope because it'll be a, a lot of dialing away from where my field points are hitting. And uh, fingers crossed I'm going to be able to drill it right in the middle of there and crack some ribs. Oh, perfect. That shot was dead center and the tomato juice is literally pouring out of the exit wound. It's important to keep in mind that you don't get bleeding like that unless you got a heart shot and even then the blood squirts out and spurts. Regardless, this model shows how the flaps cut by the shuriken keep the wound open, which will maximize your blood shell regardless of the path your arrow takes through the vitals. Absolutely perfect. And I can hear it break some ribs. <laughs> there goes the tomato juice. Hilarious. Oh, I can't wait to see the slow-mo on that.
<laughs> That's what I was hoping for. And uh, perfect shot, perfect shot. And I think it's gonna show, I'm gonna have to take this apart and make it easier to see, but look at the big cut there. And of course, this side, you'd see great blood trails as well. It's just, you don't have a heart pumping or any kind of blood pressure that would be pushing blood out this direction because it's not really blood, it's tomato juice. <laughs> and boy, I already previewed the slow-mo and you could just see it bubbling out of there. That's a really, really impressive exit wound. And again, that's what you would see on game animal if you shot one and you would get a really, really good blood trail. It, you, you can see the, the arrow here is holding that open, but that's plastic, that's stiff plastic. You'd actually just have flaps opening. The, the arrow, which buried itself in the target, would have gone right through a deer, busted through ribs on both sides, and kept going out of a bow like that. You're not gonna have the arrow holding it open, but that's why you have all of these extra cuts to improve the chance that you're gonna get a good, good blood trail. That's quite an opening, and it means you're gonna have a good blood trail. You, you're gonna get this kind of wound all the way through the deer, of course, and that means it's going to have a very short time to death. But also, you need to keep in mind that deer will run, even in five seconds, 10 seconds, they're gonna cover a lot of ground, and if it's thick, you want a good blood trail, and this is going to help you have a good blood trail. And, uh, it did not hit a rib, it's, it, it managed to find its way between two ribs. And so that's gonna happen. But it punctured right through the meat. I think it, it, it nicked off a rib and came on through. And of course, <laughs> same kind of wound on the, the, <laughs> the <laughs> bottle of tomato juice. And boy, it smells like uh, tomato massacre in here. <laughs> I told you I wasn't gonna waste those ribs. We're gonna be eating those for dinner later tonight. But in cutting them up, I discovered that this broadhead actually did cut right through a rib. It, it has a slit right there. I managed to put the broadhead back in. It popped a big chunk out of it. That's just uh, bone and marrow right there. And for a broadhead that's shaped like this with, with the cutouts to reduce weight and for better aerodynamics, to cut through bone like this and have no nicking on the blade whatsoever, that is really, really impressive. I am extremely impressed with the cutting performance of this broadhead. It leaves a great wound channel. The blades are obviously tough enough to punch through pork ribs uh, if you could get this to tune in your bow, this would be an excellent fixed, fixed blade broadhead. You don't have to worry about this opening or not in game like with expandables. For one and a half inches of cut with that double bladed design, I think that they came up with a really, really good performing broadhead. If you want to learn more about the Shuriken, be sure to click the link in the video description below. Be sure to follow me at Instagram and Facebook. You can see the links are going to be right here somewhere. And be sure to click somewhere, I'll put it over here, to subscribe so you can see my next videos on bows, guns, and other cool stuff. I really appreciate you watching Twang and Bang, and I hope to see you next time.